Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, I have mentioned a couple of times already that I have this RGB LED strip. And yeah, in fact, right now it's sort of at the back doing its thing, right? You can see that little bit of light above my computer monitor. So yeah, uh, I thought I would take a little moment to talk about that LED itself because as it turns out, it's a very interesting little device. Of course, as you can imagine, the strip is just made up of multiple of these LEDs, except these aren't just LEDs. This is the WS2812, and uh, well, this is actually an LED with a control chip built right in. This is the same kind of LED you would find if you were to sort of go to Adafruit and uh, buy their NeoPixels, right? It's the exact same idea. As it turns out, these LEDs only need three things going in, and two of them is your power, power and ground. The only thing you are using to control it is a single data pin. And what's even cooler is that each LED is able to forward messages to the next LED and so on. So what this means is you can control an arbitrarily long string of LEDs by using just one data pin. And that is always nice. Also, thanks to the fact that there is the NeoPixels library, you don't even need to really know how that pin works. There is some sort of a strict timing rule you have to follow if you want to sort of implement it yourself, but you don't have to. There is the NeoPixels library that's available for use, and you'll find it's as easy as saying you want to switch on a particular LED, and well, the library will take care of the rest for you. You can set different levels and things like that. You don't even have to think about you know, doing things like PWM or analog, right? Because again, the chips embedded on the LEDs themselves will do that part for you. All you have to do is to just send the message out and the right thing will happen. The only concern with these LEDs are their potentially high current draw. Now these LEDs are really bright, so that's not a detriment. But if you're gonna run too many LEDs at full brightness, you will find that the amount of current drawn adds up, right? So you gotta be careful of that. But if you are just going into LEDs, if you wanna sort of you know, play around with some nice bright LEDs that are very easy to work with. Definitely consider, you know, playing around with any old LED strip. Do note, of course, that you should be looking for the individually addressable ones and not those that don't have the chips on them. Now, the problem about that sort is you're going to actually have to sort of manually control the red, green and blue values. So you kind of don't have the luxury of just using a single data pin. And usually those come in threes. So the best you can do is to use three pins to control three LEDs that are going to do the same thing. So yeah, nowhere near as convenient as, well, an LED strip like this one. So yeah, that is the general gist of it. If you're looking to play with LEDs, definitely look into this. It's really fun, it's really rewarding because it's so simple. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.